Here are the six key strategies that I use to pass all the CFA exams and that should work well going into 2024. First, and maybe most important, is the total amount of hours spent studying. And let me be direct. The common notion of studying for 300 hours to prep for any of the CFA exams is not enough for like 95% of candidates out there. We're gonna talk about why 300 hours is not enough, but first I need to mention that if you wanna hear every detail on exactly how I passed all three CFA exams on the first attempt, I have an in-depth video course that you can check out where we break down every step on how the average candidate out there who may not ever become a CFA charter holder actually can pass all the exams if they're disciplined enough. The link to that video course is in the description down below. This idea of 300 hours is so ingrained into the minds of CFA charter holders and candidates alike. The Institute has constantly referenced this in some of their media. There's even an entire website, 300hours.com, named after this idea. In my opinion, this is starting to become a little bit of a self-destructive prophecy or whatever the opposite of a self-fulfilling prophecy is. It's not hard to look at the results survey that get posted to the CFA Reddit page every year on if you pass the exams and how many hours you studied, the majority of people passing the exams are studying more than 300 hours, and many of them studying four or 500 hours plus. Now, if you've never actually started studying for any of the CFA exams yet, this might sound surprising to you. If you're someone who has studied for an exam before, you, you'll know exactly why this is. There is such a massive volume of information that you have to learn and, and understand, and in many cases, memorize for each level of the CFA program to be able to pass that levels exam. It's just a huge breadth of stuff that you have to be able to pack into your brain. I've gotten the question from college students asking to compare the volume of the exams to like college final exams. And I would say, as we think about the 10 books or the 12 books, depending on the level of each CFA exam, it's almost like studying for 10 or 12 final exams and taking them all at the same time. Some of the books are probably lesser than what uh, certain college semester classes would get into. So probably more accurately, it's like studying between five and eight college exams at the same period of time and taking all those exams on the same day. I just give that comparison to illustrate why it sort of makes sense that studying for 300 hours may not be quite enough to prepare very well to pass these exams. And when you're talking about a very difficult exam, you need to be prepared very well in order to score 70% or more of the questions right. I just wanna encourage you as you think about your planning going into 2024 to get this notion of 300 hours out of your head unless you're one of the top 5% of IQ geniuses that are preparing for these exams. If you work thinking about four or 500 hours or more during your study schedule, you're going to drastically, drastically increase your probabilities of passing your upcoming test. Well, AJ, that's much easier said than done. I mean, you know, I can't just double my study hours. Well, I get that. My response would just be that if you're already going to sacrifice this much of your time and potentially this many years studying for something, you might as well do it right. I mean, you're gonna be giving up a lot. You're gonna be sacrificing a lot to study anyway. So I'm just saying maybe sacrifice just about everything, just to make sure you never have to study again. The second area is maybe the most practical or the most actionable area, and that's gonna be regarding your daily study routine. When you sit down at your desk each day and you log into a web portal or you crack open a, a book, what do you actually do with your eyes and your mind and with your hands taking notes during your study sessions to, to best digest and best remember and best practice all that information that you're taking in? First and foremost, as any CFA candidate, even if you had a finance background in, in university, you certainly should do an overview of all the information. I don't wanna to say to skip the, the basic review of all of the information, however, I definitely do not recommend investing a significant amount of your study time towards reading the content. The reason I say that is because if you choose to only use the CFA Institute content in their online learning modules, or even ordering um, a physical book, it would be easy to like read through that stuff and read every word and spend far more than 300 hours just literally reading it. There are so many pages of this stuff that especially if you're like me, I'm not a very quick reader, it's gonna be uh, such a huge waste of time. It's not efficient, it's not a great way to, to learn information. For me, I was using a test prep provider, which we'll talk about in a minute if you need one or not, but I do think one of the areas where it's helpful is that it added some efficiencies. Specifically, passing through the content, I watched video lessons. You can skim it and do it all quickly through the CFA text. You can read study notes from a provider. You can watch video lessons from a provider. Any of those three things, 
I think counts towards the review of information. Just do it in a way that's quick and efficient, but is enough to at least introduce you to every topic. Now, where most of your learning happens is with practice questions. So the biggest tip I can give you during your daily study routine is to be doing practice questions all along the way for all the material that you're reviewing. If you're doing video lessons from a test prep provider, you're doing the three to five, maybe 10 practice questions at the end of each little video chapter. If you're just studying from the CFA content, you do blue boxes and EOC questions, and then you're also probably gonna do those later on in your studies, that's a different conversation. If you are using the CFA online modules, which is, are very common now, you're gonna do the practice questions baked into that. I definitely recommend daily, as you study each day, doing a handful of practice questions along the way as you go through each chapter or LOS, just to make sure that you're really testing yourself on if you digested what you just read. Then one of the practical approaches you should be taking towards practice questions is marking off any question that you got wrong and then reviewing why you got wrong. Uh, if, if the answer explanation is enough and you're like, oh shoot, yeah, I knew that from when I read it earlier, I should have got that right that probably clicked in your brain and you can remember it for the next time. But if it's at all confusing to you, you need to pause, go back to the text, go back to that section of the video lesson, and or maybe even contact a tutor if you have one or your test prep provider offers that, and really dive into why it was that the way you did the question was wrong and the way that you should have done it is right. Your brain really needs to work through why the difference exists that one way was wrong and one was right for you to be able to do it correctly the next time. It's the revision process on a daily basis as you get practice questions wrong where your brain's gonna do a lot of learning. Final point on the daily study routine is just to take a lot of notes along the way, but not too many notes. I would definitely write out any practice questions you're doing. I would definitely write down a lot of definitions and a lot of formulas, certainly any bolded lines, but I personally didn't find much value in taking handwritten notes on themes, ideas, or concepts. I think those things are more like internalized and then you use your handwritten notes to, to sort of give the outputs of some of those themes. Otherwise, you also end up writing way too much and wasting too much time. Write a lot, definitely use note taking, but this will differ a little bit for everyone. Do just as much as you need to to have a lot of information to go back to review later on. The next point is around what study material you should be using. And this is maybe the most common question I get in YouTube comments is, should I use a certain test prep provider over another? I always stand by the position that I think test prep providers are valuable. Any of them, in my opinion, are gonna be worth what they cost because they add so much efficiency to your study time. However, the most valuable practice you're gonna get is from the CFA material. It's going to be from their end of chapter questions, EOC questions, their blue box examples, some of their online quiz modules, those used to be called topic tests, now they think they're just called quizzes on, on their web portal. Especially EOC questions and these online quizzes, those were always the questions that I felt most aligned in terms of content and difficulty to the questions that you might see on, on the real CFA exam. So those are a gold mine. Any candidate should definitely be solving every single EOC blue box example and an online quiz module because there's no better practice you're going to get, not from Wiley or Kaplan or, or Mark Meldrum. I mean, Mark Meldrum's really cool because he helps you work through the EOC questions in his content rather than trying to write new questions. See, I think he does have a QBank as well that you can purchase separately. The point is CFA content is king and then test prep content is really there, in my opinion, to add efficiencies. And then after you've done all of those practice questions from the CFAI, then you go to your test prep provider and, and work through uh, any practice questions that they might offer you. And, and you really will start to notice the difference in not only the quality of how some of these questions are written, but also just the relevance or the wording in the fact that the questions from the CFAI are gonna seem like much more real financial questions and the questions from the test prep provider are in some cases lacking. Next, we're getting into the last four to eight weeks of any CFA preparation period, and that is going to be to start focusing heavily on mock exams. And there's a few reasons why I think mock exams are one of the more valuable things that you can do while studying for any CFA test. There is some value to getting some practice in answering that many questions in that amount of time. It's, the exams are four and a half hours now split between two sections. You can use a mock exam to really time yourself out and see how you felt during that period, but I recommend the majority of your mock exams, you just use them as more blocks of practice questions, honestly, it's kind of boring. That is where the best learning comes from. And 
it, yeah, it's good to know your pacing and to be able to schedule that out. If you went over on time, you might fail an exam completely, even if you're a genius. But the majority of people don't fail because they lose on time. Some do, but the majority of people fail because they're just not as prepared as they could have been. Mock exams give you a whole lot more practice questions to be learning from. There are tons and tons and tons of old mock exams available online. The Institute gives you some. If you have a test prep provider, you can get some. Anyway, my number is always do 10 or more. Do 10 or more mock exams for any level that you're preparing for. I always gave myself about six weeks. It would take like three days to go through one since I was just doing them in groups of 10 or 20 questions and then, and then grading myself on each group of questions. And then I would take one or two days to review the ones I got wrong and, and uh, answer myself if I understood why I got it wrong. If not, go back, review it, relearn the material, take that one question again that you got wrong. Once you get it right, you know you, you've sort of done your work there and move on. And then I always did do one live mock. If you can find a live mock offered in your area, it could be worth doing where I would go in on a Saturday, like two weeks before the exam, and I would sit down for six hours, seven hours with an hour lunch break. The exams used to be a little bit longer. And in that live mock is when I would really practice my timing and my cadence in, in getting through all the questions and the amount of time that you have. I didn't do any of that with the mocks I did at home. Again, I just used them to do a whole lot more practice. Because like I said at the beginning of this video, practice is where your brain will do the most learning. Finally, memorizing formulas is probably still, I would say, the biggest differentiating factor between those candidates who prepare well but still fail and those candidates who prepared well and were able to pass. I have a few videos on the channel going into a lot of detail on the formula memorization process. I think the videos are called like the secret to passing the CFA exams because I certainly believe memorizing formulas, especially for the level one exam, memorizing formulas for that test is the secret to passing it because what you're just gonna find, and if you're already studying for level one, you will have seen this plenty of times, there are so many questions, especially I can just remember an econ and equity for some reason. There are so many questions where it'll just say, here's the GDP of a country or a Gordon growth model. Here's the required growth rate. Here's the risk-free rate, you know, calculate next year's dividend or something like that. Well, it's like a three variable algebra equation. As long as you have that formula memorized, you just plug two numbers into it, pull out your calculator, get the answer. There are plenty. I mean, I don't know how many, a whole bunch of questions on the level one exams that, and you'll see this in mocks as well, that are just pretty simple math equations where you plug in a couple variables and get the answer. Anyone with a you know fifth grade level of math or higher can do these questions if they know the formula. Just practicing the questions on their own is not enough for most people. You really have to spend three days just memorizing formulas in order to be prepared well enough to get all these quick algebra questions right on your exam. This will make a world of difference if you do this formula memorization thing right. As to the specific process that I recommend you follow in the three days leading up to your exam, I just did exactly what Mark Meldrum told me to do when I was a level one candidate way back when. He uploaded a video sort of like this and said, hey, you need to memorize formulas, here's how to do it. So you can watch his old videos on formula memorization or watch a couple on my channel that get into the secret of passing the CFA exams, which is formula memorization. And it, it'll go into every little step along the way that you can, uh, you can every little trick you can use to best cram as many formulas as possible into your brain a few days before the test. I'll just close this point by saying this. If you go into a CFA exam without having had memorized all the formulas that you know will be ac applicable to that exam, you're like setting yourself up for massive failure. I mean, I consider it just really irresponsible to not spend the last two or three days memorizing these things because you're gonna get so many extra questions right just by knowing them. I know I already plugged my video course earlier on, but I do just wanna say you can check out the formula sheets I used on my Patreon page if you want to. Now, some of them are getting a little out of date. I've updated them once or twice in the past few years, but it's still worth mentioning because if you don't have any concise list of formulas, and let's say you're taking the November 2023 CFA exam coming up shortly, you can go on my Patreon and buy for 20 bucks my list of formulas that I use to memorize. And um, these were the formulas that I felt would be applicable in the year that I took the level one exam. It could be helpful to you there too. I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video here. And as always,